Redbeard comes in with an excellent question that maybe he should have asked beforehand. What are your thoughts on the 6800 XT versus something from NVIDIA? Also, how do you feel about the 7600X CPU? Thanks, just bought these parts. Buy Windows 10 Professional for $15, activate instantly online with Microsoft, and keep it forever. Don't pay full price, get the best deal from our sponsor, URCD Keys, using our link in the video description below. Full details on how this amazing deal works at the end of the video. Well, how do I put this? If you've already bought them, they're great. Why are you asking me now? It, that's sort of like closing the barn door after the horses have left, to coin a phrase that I didn't coin that was an old yet. phrase. Um, they're fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, sure, I'm sure it'll be a lovely experience. And if you're just gaming or just using your computer, you know, a 7600X is not terrible. You know, with the new lower prices, when it launched at 300 uh, I wasn't a fan, but it's now $199. Mm -hmm. And at 200 bucks. I'm not a super fan, but I no longer detest it the way I did it at 300. 300. It's like, oh, okay. The big problem with it is the motherboards and RAM are expensive. It's just, yeah. You know, the thing is, it has an upgrade path, and that's probably its only saving grace. Is is it because otherwise, 220 bucks for a 12700K, at least during Prime Day, mm -hmm. is a much better choice. Except there's not really much of an upgrade path. I mean, technically 14th gen. But, yeah, you know, that's coming in three months. The bigger question is the 6800 XT. Now, I really do like the 6800 XT, and in that regard, I'm happy with it. That is a 16 gigabyte VRAM card, RDNA 2. The drivers are solid. I've had no problem with our 6000 series cards. The performance is good. Ray tracing is honestly kind of crap, but if you don't care about ray tracing, then who cares? Content creation, productivity, work, and streaming kind of suck on that card. I mean, if you are a Twitch streamer, if you use Adobe, if you, mm. uh, you know, you should have an NVIDIA card. It's as simple as that. NVIDIA's, NVIDIA's productivity tools and content creation tools and streaming tools and encoding tools are simply superior to AMD and the price premium is worth it for those users. Mm -hmm. And if you care about ray tracing, NVIDIA is worth the price premium. Correct. Fun fact, not only does an RTX 4070 beat a 6800 or 6900 XT with ray tracing on, you know AMD's new RDNA 3 based RX 7900 XT? 4070 beats it too. Yeah. Not all the time, but at 1440p with ray tracing and DLSS on. Now, the 12 gigs of VRAM make it kind of blech. I mean, I get that. Yeah. 20 versus. In many regards, the 7900 XT is still a bit. We're talking about a different card here. AMD's video cards are quite good. AMD CPUs are good, but my big beef with the 7600X, it is six cores and 12 threads in 2023. Mm -hmm. Can we move on from that, please? We're trying. My office machine has eight cores now. Now, in fairness, my mother's machine still has six cores. She has a Ryzen 5 3600X. Facebook and email is yeah. literally all she does with that. Which is fine. Which is fine. She does have 32 gigs of RAM. Of course she does. Because it's me. What do you want to add to this thought other than he should ask this question before he buys and not yeah, after? Yeah, he should ask. And also it depends what's your use case. I mean, it's very hard to answer this without a use case. If it's multiple monitors, if it's AAA gaming, if it's 1440p, if it's 4K, is it a 144 hertz? I mean, are you playing... I don't know, PUBG, are you playing Cyberpunk? I mean, my goodness, there is there there is a lot we could, there's a lot of gaps we could fill in if we have more information. But you've bought them, so if you haven't opened them, enjoy them, and if you haven't opened them... If you bought a 7600X specifically for the upgrade path with the intention to buy Zen 5 in 2024 when it launches, Fair enough. Yeah, fair I enough. I mean, that's fine. And it depends on what motherboard he bought. Did he buy a, a good board to put it on, or did he buy a crappy board to put it on? Unfortunately, the good motherboards start at 300 bucks for AM5. I'm not a fan of the 150 to 200R boards. They're they're okay, but the, the feature differences, power delivery differences, and overall future of them is just kind of... 
You can, but man, oh man. Of course, here's the problem. Buying a $300 R motherboard for a $200 CPU is dumb. I mean, I would argue with that. That's That makes no sense. A $200 7600X shouldn't have anything more than maybe a $150 motherboard. But the problem is if what motherboards are available for AM5 that are 150 And let me tell you, they're, they're pretty, mm, yeah. Exactly. It's a bit of a quandary. AMD kind of went weird with AM5 because it's basically you either go premium or you go Intel. Intel is the budget deal. You can get an i7-12700K or even an i5-12400F, which, I mean, if you just want six cores, fine. That's a six core 12 thread chip. You can buy those for 150 bucks and you can install them on sub $100 motherboards mm -hmm. and put DDR4 RAM on them, which is cheapest chips and get roughly the same performance as the 7600X minus the upgrade path. But if you spend 250 on a motherboard for AMD plus DDR5 RAM, plus everything needed on the new platform just for a future upgrade, you're sort of missing the forest for the trees because you could build the Intel system mm -hmm. and with the savings, just replace it all in a couple of years with all new stuff and then you'd still have a working motherboard CPU RAM combo. An upgrade path doesn't make sense if the option to upgrade costs more money, the motherboard and the RAM and everything, than if you had just bought two of the Intel option. So he's been playing Destiny 2 Modern Warfare 2 at 1080p and he bought the Steel Legend B650E. Looking for a Windows 10 or 11 product key, but you don't want to spend $100 to $200 for it? Our sponsor, URCD Keys, provides discounted Windows keys at amazing prices. $15 for Windows 10 Professional, $21 for Windows 11 Professional, and just $60 for Microsoft Office 2021 Professional Plus. These product keys are the real deal. They activate directly with Microsoft Online, link to your Microsoft account, and they work forever. For Windows, you simply go to Settings, Update and Security, Activation, click Change Product Key, paste the key provided by URCD Keys, and in seconds, you're activated with Microsoft. For Office, go to setup.office.com, sign in with your Microsoft account, paste the product key provided by URCD Keys, and then download Office 2021 Pro Plus directly from Microsoft. Remember to use the discount code TD20 to save 25% off the already deeply discounted prices and support our channel at the same time. We have been using product keys from URCD Keys for almost five years now without any issues and encourage you to do so as well. Last time I looked, the Steel Legend B650E was about $220. 80 bucks more buys the X670. I get why you didn't for a 7600X, but I can't I can't do it. I bought an X670 East Steel Legend. It's a great board, it's 300 bucks. The 80 bucks isn't worth it. It's just not worth the savings. Over the course of the five or seven years you can have that platform going through Zen 5 and Zen 6, I think there it's missing PCI Express lines, it's missing USB ports, it's missing M.2 slots, it's missing power delivery, it's missing it's, it's there's just it's, it's just it's gonna make it rough to upgrade. It's like you're spending all this money and you just missed the last 80 bucks. I you already bought it, so I mean, you know, that's fine, but that's my big beef. Well, it's gonna last you as long as it's gonna last you, and when it's not working it you want it, then you get to change your computer. Oh, interesting. I missed the games. I saw the Steel Legend. He's playing Modern Warfare 2 on a six core chip. I don't care if it's N5, really. That game uses cores. Yeah. That game, I... Look, if you had bought... Uh, obviously, prices depend upon the time you bought. Yep. A, I did a build video recently on the Ryzen 7 7700X. You did. The 7700X is 8 cores, 12 threads. You may think, well, uh, 8 cores, 16 threads. You may think 8 cores versus 6 doesn't make that big of a difference. And it didn't three years ago. But now... It does today. I, six cores needs to go away. It does. And it is going away with 14th gen Intel. They are putting uh, E cores on the 14400 chip. Oh, they are? Yeah, so they're raising okay. the core counts on the i5s on the 14th gen because six cores needs to just die. <laughs> yes, it does. Seriously. I mean, this is, 
Ryzen 5 should be 8 cores, Ryzen 7 should be 12, and Ryzen 9 should be 16 at a minimum. And 6 shouldn't even exist. Of course, Intel still makes a 2-core, two 2-thread two Celeron, but that really isn't built for the U.S. market. No, that's, no. you know, But that chip needs to go away, too. Yep. Oh, fun fact. The new i3. Now, I don't have this, like, officially confirmed on a slide from Intel, but I've seen it in such a way that I'm convinced this is true. I3. I3. 14100. Six cores, 12 threads. Oh. The 14th gen refresh i3s will be 16, will be six cores. Wow. Huh. So we're going to get that all. No offense, a lot. but that is why the 7600X is kind of like. But you bought it. So enjoy. It's amazing. You asked for an answer. I gave you one. You may not like it, but there it is. Anything else you want to add? Thank you for the support. We appreciate it.